So this week we're going to talk about optional wool inside of your Diamond Skill Builder quilt. Wool is optional and it gives your block some beautiful added dimension. I have wool in both of my samples behind me. This sample, the back of it was done with the sashed back option. So on the back, you will see some sashing strips between our blocks and the wool was placed in each block as it also was on this quilt. On my little strip layout quilt, I did not add wool while it was in the hoop, but I did add it later on. So after I had my top all completely finished with the battleizer and the blocks and stitched and trimmed and sewn together, I then layered my quilt with the wool batting between the quilt top and the back. And then I stitched in the ditch on the various details on the blocks and I also stitched in the ditch on these blocks right here. So you'll see the quilting does look different, but they both have wool in it. And wool is optional, so it's entirely up to you. But if you do use wool in your blocks, you're going to need your optional wool templates. So let's tell you what all what those are all about right now. This is our optional wool template document, which you will find in your files on your USB. So I have it all printed out here. The first thing to note is this little one inch box. You're going to want to print these templates up if you're going to be using the optional wool. And the first thing you'll want to do is measure that box and make sure it's one inch, which will then ensure that your templates are the right size. So the first one we see is diamond one through six and background one large wool template. So this is for the large block. The first few pages are all for the large block, which it says right here. Diamond one through six are all the beautiful diamond files and BG stands for background. So it's background one. There's several different background blocks and it tells you to cut a three or six and three quarter inch wide strip of wool batting. And then we will use this template to cut the optional wool. So this is template A. This is template B because it's too large to put on one piece of paper. So you're going to cut them both out. You'll cut them both out just at, around the lines and then you'll tape A and B together matching the red line. So I've cut both of these out. I will put them just like this matching up that red line and I will tape that together and then I will have my large uh, background template and for my diamonds one through six. So that's that one. Next we have our background two large wool template, same size strip of wool. Then our background three, same size strip of wool. This is background four, again the same size strip of wool, so that's easy. Cut one size of strip and then you can cut out all your your wool. Now this is background one half because there's one that's like the large diamond that's cut in half. And this one's the same thing. We have to cut them both out, which I've done here. And then we tape them together to get our, our half of a wool template. Next, we have our small ones. We are going to be for our videos for this quilt, we are going to be working on the small blocks. So we have our diamond one through six and our background one small wool template. We do not have to tape it together. It's exactly the right size. Again, just make sure you're printing at the right size that it's one inch. This is this one fit on this piece of paper. This is our background four, background two, background three, and our BG one half. And these are all for the small. So I have gone ahead and cut out all of my small templates. This is for my diamond blocks and my background one blocks. Here's the half. Here's the BG4, BG2, and BG3. So let's use these to cut out some wool. So on all of my small, uh, my small blocks, I need a four inch strip of wool batting. So I have here a small a four inch strip of wool batting and we'll just show you quickly how to cut these out. So this is our main piece for our diamonds one through six and our background one. All you're going to do is lay it diagonally. You'll align the two edges of your wool 
and then just take a rotary cutter ruler, lay it right on top of your template, and rotary cut just on the edge, taking care not to cut your template. And then on this side, you can turn it around and just get the other side cut. Lay your ruler right on top of it. This little piece we could probably discard. So this is our diamonds one through six and our background wools ready to go. For the rest of the pieces, they also fit on this four inch strip. So you can see this one, once we get our angle, you can put your ruler right there and cut this way. And then you can just flip it over and cut the next one, flip it over, cut the next one. So that's easy. Same with this one. Once we get that angle, now this one I can turn over. I have my angle, cut it, and then I can flip it, cut it, and continue on. This one, the same thing. I can turn it over, this is for background four. Turn it over, I've got my angle started, cut it straight, flip it, cut it, and just keep going right on down the line. And this one is also this, the same way. I've got my angle, so I'll go ahead and cut it, and then flip it and keep going. So the next step after you get all of your wool templates cut is to go ahead and take them to the iron and get them get your edges pressed so we'll do that next so once you get your wool your optional wool all cut here is how you're going to prep it i picked up this trick from my friend susan kavicki so if you're watching susan here's a shout out to you great job i've always just pressed the edges of the batting but i always did it with my iron she uses a piece of paper so this is what we need to do. I have my iron set at the hottest it'll go. I have a piece of paper that's just folded in half, so it's doubled. And I'm going to take that paper and place it about a quarter of an inch over the edge of my piece of wool. And just take that iron and slowly run it across up to the folded edge. And by using the paper, it won't stick to your iron. And by having it nice and hot, it will get compressed, which is what we want on the edges. You can peel it off. So you can see that this edge is really compressed. And this edge that we haven't pressed yet is very fluffy. So the advantage of doing this is when you tack it down in your hoop, your foot will have a much easier time traveling over this compressed edge than it will over this fluffy edge. So we just do that on all four sides. And usually I will do this when my machine is stitching something that takes a few minutes. So I'll just hop over to my iron and get a few of these done so they're done ahead of time. Like, you know, a little bit of multitasking is very helpful. So we just keep turning it overlapping it about a quarter inch and giving it a press until all four sides are done. And I do this on all of my optional wool pieces. So there you have it. So I hope that wool prep helped you out a little bit. So next week, we're going to be stitching out block one. Finally, we get to stitch out a block. So block one is right here on this quilt. And on this quilt, block one is right here. So join me next week, and let's get started with our stitching.